Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. I'm a hand letterer and logo designer, and today we're gonna to be going ahead and I'm gonna show you 10 tips for Illustrator 2017 that you must know. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Okay, so the first tip is for anyone who does illustrations or vector artwork within the logo type or sort of badge scene. So many times we see mistakes on Illustrator and we can't really correct them very easily. So for any of you who do logo type design or illustrations or doing badges like what I've got on the screen in front of me, you'll know that it can be difficult sometimes to match things up. And by that I mean the paths because of the thickness of the stroke. You can see here the strokes are too thick. So the first tip I'm going to give you is outline mode, which is command Y. And what this does is it gives you an outline mode of all of the paths. So it just shows that the raw paths in very thin lines. And you can see here, it doesn't look like I've made a mistake, but I have. I've made, I haven't joined this one up properly to here. And this is the good way of making sure your paths are connected and they look decent. We've also got another mistake here that you would not have seen before. I've got like a normal path here, but you can see I've got a bunch of anchor points which are making this look a bit weird. Now in the printing process, this would not look good at all. You need to make sure that your designs look good. So the first tip is outline mode in Illustrator, which will give you a more accurate representation of what you're making. The second tip is artboards. You may be wondering why do I need to know about artboards? Artboards, I know about them, but in reality, you don't use them enough. In Illustrator, you can make as many artboards as you really want within your document. And basically, I'll show you my screen here. Have you seen how many artboards I've used for this one logo design piece? There's quite a few there. And whenever I'm designing a logo, I like to have multiple artboards because then I can actually export these, which I'll show you in the tip later. I can export these to clients and people can preview these artboards separately. And also it gives me more of a space to work on and it's a great organizational thing. To do this, you just press Shift and O and you make a new artboard by copying it by holding Alt and dragging and you create a new artboard and it copies whatever is on that artboard too, as long as you haven't locked the layer. The third tip is reflecting. Now reflecting is a bit of a broad term, but basically here on my screen, this is some work that I did in collaboration with Instagram and the new Geo stickers, and you can find these in London, Shoreditch and Gatwick, and it's all my work that's on the stickers. And basically, if I wanted to know whether this was balanced or not, without reading the word, just like the shape in general, a great thing to do is to go ahead and select everything make it a bit smaller on your page and just press O. And when you press O, that'll bring you to the reflect tool. Go ahead and press option and click and you'll see you get this reflecting box here, this little dialog box and you can reflect vertically, which will basically reflect it horizontally. Press copy and you'll get a copy of the reflected work. Now what this does is it allows your brain to see the artwork as shapes instead of a word. When you reflect it like this, it allows you to get a gist of the flow of the work. Now, this is such an easy thing to do in Illustrator. And if you have an iPad, you can even do it within the Adobe Sketch apps or even in Procreate. Reflecting your logo types or just hand lettering can give you a sense of balance and give you a sense of flow within your type. And it also allows you to see any inconsistencies to make it different. So reflect your artwork to see the balance and also how it reacts to the flow without being influenced by the letters. The fourth essential tip for you to know in Illustrator is that you can make guides out of anything. Now by guides, I mean these lines here, these magenta lines that pop up whenever I drag from the top. Now you don't just have to use it there. You can actually go ahead and make your own guides by choosing any path and highlighting it and pressing command five and that will give you a guide. Now guides basically guide your work and what you want to do. So say for this work here, if I wanted to just have a circle that was a guide for this general piece of work here, I can just go ahead and make a circle, press command five, and that could be a guide for my work. As you see, it doesn't work very well there, but when you create mandalas or create something like this and maybe doing hand lettering straight in Illustrator, this is actually really essential to have these guides here. And as long as it's got a path in it, which it most likely will do because it's Illustrator, then you can make a guide out of it. So you can go absolutely crazy with shapes and do some work inside of them. The fifth tip is horizontal and vertical handles. Now, handles and using the pen tool is a bit of a difficult subject. I've got a course coming out very soon all about handles and how to vectorize your type properly. But basically, when you're an illustrator, what you really wanna be doing is placing anchor points and handles in the north, east, south, and west of the most extreme curves. So some people say it's the highest point, which is here, and to the 
point on the right. And you work this out by bringing guides in and seeing which of the guys touch first on the top, bottom, left and right. And that is where your anchor points and handles should be going and facing. Now, the great thing about doing this is that your work remains smooth and it, the less amount of anchor points you use, the easier it is to edit the work and also the smoother it looks when it's been fully vectorized. So just for this, I can go ahead and quickly edit this end by selecting this anchor point here and I can change the curvature of this whole shape here by moving that and it doesn't affect anything else but it still looks very natural. The sixth essential tool to know about Illustrator is that you can use shapes to make awesome content. You don't need to use the pen tool. For this illustration here, I use mainly shapes. Now, a lot of people may use the pen tool to like, you know, go ahead and make the, the sun or to make the mountains, but I actually used shapes because it's a bunch easier. Now, the great thing about Illustrator is they have this thing called the Shape Builder tool, and within this, you can actually manipulate shapes, cut them out, and add them together to create some really wacky shapes. And I'll show you what I mean. Over here, I have the golden ratio over here, and it's mapped to the size of the circle. Now I want the sun to be this part here. So I want to choose a circle that best represents that size. So I'm going to choose that one. Now say if I want this to be a moon, I could go ahead and basically just, you know, uh, make a circle like this with a pencil and it takes forever and I could create a crescent here, but it will look pretty naff because it's done by hand and it's not done correctly at all. So what I want to do is actually use other shapes to do this. So I'm going to choose this circle again, and then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to choose this circle again and duplicate over to the right. And if I wanted this to be a moon, what I would do is I highlight these both, press Shift and M, which will give us to a shape builder tool, which I've got another video on if you search the channel. And I'm going to press Alt and drag these away. And you can see that I've just cut out that circle from the circle underneath, which has given me a crescent moon. This is a very, very simple technique uh, here, but it can be a lot more complicated. You can use golden ratios and you can basically just use circle squares. You never really have to touch a pen tool sometimes when you're doing illustrations or logo types, especially geometric logo types. The next tip is copying your last move with Command D. I didn't know what to call this because it basically just copies the last move. Now say if I have this circle up here and I want it to repeat all the way around in a perfect circle, I don't want to be going ahead and duplicating it and making it all weird. I don't want to be putting guides up. I just want to really quickly do it. Well, here's how you can do it. Highlight your little circle or shape, change it to the size that you want, put it where it wants, Put it at the top, make sure it's aligned with the artboard, highlight it, then press R, go to the middle of your object here and press Alt and click. And basically you can rotate this to a certain degree. Press preview and I'm going to uh, do this at 25 or 23 and then I'm going to press copy. Now, when I press copy, I can go ahead and press command D and this will repeat all the way around my shape, giving me a great pattern. Obviously, I haven't chosen the best number to do that, but it makes sense. This way, you can quickly create patterns and awesome images in Illustrator with hardly any work. It just sort of follows the last transformation that you've used. I think it's called Transform Again, which you can actually study more on this channel, which if you look at all my other videos, you will see. The eighth tip for you guys is to use the pencil tool. Now, the pencil tool is kind of like the pen tool, but it's a lot more free. It's kind of like for drafting the pen tool. Now what it does is basically if I go ahead and click, I can go ahead and create curves exactly how I want them in Illustrator and only by using the pencil tool. And with this, it's really great if you don't feel confident using the pen tool because I can go ahead and map out certain lines or do certain things in here. I can create a circle. Now, if you go ahead and double click on here, you'll get a bunch more options in here like the pencil tool options where you can change the smoothness and all these different things here we can go ahead and create whatever. But not only that, you can actually change the width of this by pressing Shift and W or by going to the width tool and changing the width like this. And what that does is allows you to change the width of it. So you can do some really cool drawings with the Wacom uh, graphics tablet or Cintiq or iPad and not have to worry about it. It has smooth compensation on it so you don't have to worry about jagged lines. I've absolutely destroyed this one though, but if I had my graphics tablet with me, I'd be able to do some really nice smooth lines for you just like that and you can create some really cool shapes. The ninth tool is typing on a path to create a circle type path thing. Have you ever seen hand lettering artists type within shapes? Well, this is kind of like the same thing. Now, what if you wanted your lettering or the, the words that you're using not to follow this sort of rhythm, but to follow the curved rhythm here, as you can see, the curved shape. 
Well, you don't do this by simply placing the letters in each section. This is called type on a path. So if I wanted to do this, I'd make a circle like so. And this is basically just a circle with a white stroke on it. I'm gonna highlight this circle and go over to my text option here, hold down and go to type on a path tool. I'm gonna to click at the top and I'm gonna make these a bit smaller here. I'm gonna say, Will Pat is awesome. And that looks really bad. So what the next thing you need to do is go ahead and click here and move these to the right move this to the left and what this is doing is you're editing the path of which it's been drawn on like so i'm going to highlight all of this and i'm going to change this i'm going to change it to uppercase i'm going to make it all a lot smaller will pat is awesome like so and that is how you can type on a path to make a circle mandala or something like this that I've done here. It's very easy, very basic, and it works really well for any sort of illustrator file that you're using. And it's also great for hand lettering compositions before you actually spend the time lettering the composition. And the last tip is exporting your artboards easily and in different files. Have you ever had to export a number of artboards in Illustrator and it's just a tedious task. Maybe you just screenshot them. Well, Illustrator and Adobe have actually changed the way they do this and they do it now by literally just go up to file, go to export and export for screens. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to choose the artboards and you can clear the selection and choose the ones that you want, such as like this, I'm gonna choose these ones, maybe this one, this one, and I can choose different formats and a place to do it. So as soon as I want to send these to people, I can choose the resolution, what format it is, and I can choose different suffixes, and I can also go ahead and choose a destination for that. And it's pretty much instantaneous, watch. Export artboards, and you can see they're all there, just here for me to preview after in 172 ppi, which is quite high resolution. And there you have it guys, there's 10 essential tips for Illustrator 2017. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, press that subscribe button, which is the red button down below. It is completely free. And also if you wanna be notified of any videos that come out on this channel, because I upload quite regularly about three times a week then you can press that little bell next to it and if you have a smartphone every time i've uploaded a video it will pop up on there for you to be notified that i have done so i hope you guys have a great week thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video see you soon this video is sponsored by dev mountain if any of you are interested in learning ux design dev mountain is a 12-week design boot camp intended to get you a full-time job in the industry you can learn more about this at devmountain.com or click the link in the description below.